Hi, I'm Dave, and in this episode, we're gonna turn this basement workspace into this. So about four years ago, I'd quickly built small, individual workbenches for my kids so they could make whatever they wanted to and have dedicated space all to themselves, which was great at the time, but as they've gotten older, I've noticed a few things that have caused me to want to make some big changes to the space. The kids weren't all working on projects at the same time, and sometimes they needed more or less room than their individual workspace, and they were starting to spend a lot more time standing at my workbench and using it. Also, developing habits like keeping an area clean and organized, putting things back where they belong, sharing and telling me when we needed more of a specific supply are valuable things to learn, not just for a maker space, but for being a contributing member of society. So, being as how I am their father and have some level of responsibility for their growth, changing the space was a great way to go for the sake of society. Since this renovation was gonna hopefully last much longer than the last one, there were gonna be some infrastructure upgrades. Specifically, more overhead lighting and electrical outlets. So every spot in the space would be a great place to work. Since the kids like to stand and move around, all the work areas were gonna be at standing height. And since all of us were doing different projects and using different tools all the time, having a tool and storage system that was easy to adjust was gonna be really helpful. Most of the wood and screws from the previous workspace got reused for framing. This is a basement workspace, and I didn't want to drill into the walls to weaken them and make spots for water to try and find a way in. So most of the connection points were to the floorboards above. The framing definitely isn't as pretty as a large bowl of ice cream or a plate of fresh bacon, but I didn't need it to be. Once the framing was done, I asked my friend Rick to come and help us set up all the electrical. After explaining that we wanted to have outlets every five to six feet and a few inches above where the workbench surface was gonna be, Rick laid out all the wire through the framing and showed us how to strip the wire to prep it before he came back, which was great because it gave us a chance to talk about how houses get wired for electricity and some general things to keep in mind when working with electricity, like shutting off power at the breaker box since depending on the house, you could turn off a switch, but the wires can still be live, which is a problem because handling live wires is bad. Very bad. So we got to talk about that kind of stuff. You know, the good stuff. Then it was time to figure out the general placement of all the overhead lights. We ended up almost tripling the amount of lighting. These lights can be plugged into each other to create kind of a lighting chain, but max out at four connections we would eventually have all the lights connected to one outlet that we could control with a light switch right at the entrance of the space. This way, we could turn all the lights on or off. Just like the old setup, the workbenches were gonna be made of various lengths of two by fours. So this was a great opportunity to teach my son how to use the miter saw and the importance of staying present with power tools, especially when you're repeatedly making the same cut. I don't want him using the miter saw by himself yet, but I do want to have him and his sisters practicing as much as possible and as safely as possible with me. Rick came back to inspect their work and then showed us how to attach the wires to the outlets. We all got a lot of practice prepping the wires and then hooking them so they'd fit over the outlet screws and connecting the correct color wire to the correct color screw to have all the outlets be correctly wired into a circuit. With all the parts cut, building the workbenches was pretty easy. It just took time to do. I got quicker with each bench. Before long, they were ready. What took more time was attaching them all equally level to the wall framing and making adjustments for plumbing pipes. Our basement floor isn't level, but some of that is because it's a basement floor, so everything slopes towards the floor drain. Some of the table legs were nowhere near touching the ground. So for those, I temporarily used shims and attached two by fours in the sides for additional support. Since the bottom shelves were ready to go, I had MDF cut the size at the local home center, made a few small modifications at home, and then installed them along with some inexpensive plywood as backing boards. This was gonna hide the framing and stop stuff from falling or rolling off the back of shelves. Now it was time for what I had been really looking forward to, making the French cleats for all the walls. Using a French cleat basically means you have a part attached to a wall with a bevel 
and another part with an opposite bevel that will sit on top of it, connected to shelving. It makes for a really strong connection. For us, I cut 3 quarter inch plywood into strips, and then cut those strips in half with a 45 degree cut. Half the parts got glued and screwed into the plywood that would be attached to the wall framing, and the other halves would be used with shelving for different stuff like tools and supplies. What's nice is we'll be able to move all the shelving around as needed, depending on the different projects we're working on. Once all the panels were ready, holes for the outlets were made, and then panels got attached to the framing. Some of the panels went on easier than others, and some framing needed to be added so that there would be a sturdier connection. A few panels got left off until Rick could come back to remove old outlets and a few other electrical things. Along with final touches on the electrical, there were a few other things to wrap up, like closing up other parts of the framing, finishing up the sidewall, all kinds of adjustments around plumbing, making cooler looking feet for all the legs, cutting MDF to size and attaching it so the work surface would be complete, cutting some outlet covers to fit inside cleats, cutting some cleats for the outlet covers to fit, and rearranging the lighting cords so they'd all be lifted up and out of the way. Then the only thing left to do was for Rick to put an outlet where the lights could plug in and have it connected to a light switch. From here, we just needed to move in. So we've been using the workspace for about five months now and are really happy with how it's turned out. There's plenty of space to work, outlets to plug into, overhead lighting to see what we're doing, <laughs> and lots of storage for tools and materials. There's still a few more things to build and I'll probably even change some of the shelves we've already done, but none of that is a big thing to do.